Hi, my name is Diasha. Welcome to this series called Physical and Chemical Change. In this series, we are going to be examining change. There are hundreds of natural changes that happen around us every day. The sun, the moon and stars change their position relative to the earth. Rocks change slowly to make sand and the movement of water changes the surface of the land. Plants and animals also change as they grow. But human activity also changes things. Industry changes raw materials into more useful materials like steel. We change different kinds of fuels by burning them and we process animals and plants to make food. Then we change food by cooking it. Even our bodies change food when we eat it. We live in a constantly changing world. In this lesson, we will focus on the changes that occur during heating. So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe what happens to substances when we heat them and explain the changes observed by using a microscopic model of matter. To kick off our investigations, let's take a look at what John is up to in the lab. Hi there guys, if we're going to be observing the changes taking place when we heat things, we're going to need to find a way of measuring the difference in temperature. Normally, we use a thermometer to do this. A thermometer is a sealed glass tube containing this silver mercury over here. I'm now going to take the temperature of the boiling water by simply dipping the mercury into the water. Watch what happens to the bead of mercury. Do you see that when the mercury thermometer was placed in the hot water, the mercury extended, got longer. Now I'm going to put the mercury thermometer into cold water. Watch what happens. It's starting to get smaller. Now notice that the mercury looks the same whether it is hot or cold. It is still a silvery liquid. It is only the length of the line that we see in the thermometer that changed. This means that the mercury must take up more space when placed in hot substances and less space when it is placed in a cold substance. Most substances expand when you heat them, just like mercury, and they contract when they are cooled. Let's go back to the studio to find out why this happens. Thanks, John. To find out why mercury expands when it is heated, we need to look at a microscopic model of matter. So, imagine that you can see particles of mercury. What do you think happens to these particles to make the thread of mercury get longer when we put the thermometer into hot water? Why don't you take some time to write down an explanation or discuss your ideas in pairs? I'm going to use some diagrams of the particles in mercury to explain these ideas. This diagram represents some of the mercury particles in the thermometer before we put the thermometer into the hot water. Remember, these particle pictures are like photographs. They don't show movement. Notice the particles are arranged haphazardly and not regularly because mercury is in the liquid phase. This second diagram represents the same mercury particles when we put the thermometer into hot water. Notice the mercury particles in cold mercury are the same size as mercury particles in hotter mercury. The particles themselves don't get bigger when the thermometer is in hot water, but the space the mercury particles occupy does get bigger. Now, instead of looking at diagrams, let's have a look at this animation of the mercury particles. When the mercury is cold, the mercury particles are close together. The particles are moving slowly in a random manner. Watch what happens when the thermometer is put into hot water. Do you notice that the particles move faster and further apart? These particles have more kinetic energy. Where do they get this extra energy from? Well, it is transferred from the hot water. This extra energy allows the mercury particles to move past each other more easily. So, they can spread out and occupy more space. The mercury thread expands on heating because the way its particles are arranged changes. They move further apart and the forces between the particles become weaker. We call any change in the way the same particles are arranged a physical change. During these types of changes, there is a transfer of small quantities of energy. 
Physical changes also take place when substances change phase. In the first beaker there are ice cubes, but if the ice cubes are left on the lab counter for a while, they melt to form liquid water. Ice or solid water can change from the solid phase to the liquid phase. We call this change of phase melting. When we want to represent this as a reaction, we write H2O brackets S react to form H2O brackets L. The S in brackets means solid and the L in brackets means liquid. Look at what happens to the water molecules during this physical change called melting. Energy is transferred from sunlight to the water molecules. This increases the kinetic energy of the water molecules. The water molecules can now move faster. So instead of vibrating in one place as they do in ice, water molecules can move more freely and spread out. This is because the forces between the water molecules are weaker in liquid water than in ice. But melting is not the only phase change that can take place. If you put the water on a spirit burner, you will see that the water level decreases and then starts to boil. Eventually, all the water will disappear from the beaker. What do you think happens here? That's right. Liquid water changes from the liquid to the gas phase. We call this change evaporation and we represent this as H2O brackets L becomes H2O brackets G. What do you think the G in brackets tells us? The transfer of energy from the spirit burner to water enables the water molecules to move even faster. They can move so freely that they can escape almost completely from each other and move into the air. This phase change is called evaporation. The water molecules are now even further apart, which means that the intermolecular forces in water vapor act over bigger distances than in liquid water. So the intermolecular forces are weaker in water vapor than in liquid water. Water molecules are rearranged during the melting of ice and the evaporation of water. These rearrangements happen as a result of the transfer of relatively small quantities of energy. No new substance forms either when ice melts or when water evaporates. The molecules in ice, water and water vapor are the same. So we can say that phase changes are physical changes. Right, let's move on and explore another physical change. Does your bathroom also look something like this after you have taken a shower early in the morning? I am sure you have also struggled to fix your hair in a mirror that is all misted up. Have you ever wondered how this happens? Well, water molecules will evaporate from the hot shower water to form water vapor in the air. When the warm water vapor comes into contact with the cold mirror, energy is transferred from water molecules to the mirror glass. As the water molecules lose energy and they move more slowly, they begin to exert stronger forces on each other and so stay close to each other. This happens over and over until visible drops of liquid form. We can represent this change as H2 O brackets G becomes H2O brackets L. When water turns into water vapor, we say it evaporates. When water vapor changes back into the liquid phase, we call the phase change condensation. So, condensation is the reverse of evaporation. Both these phase changes are physical changes. Let's summarize what we have found out about physical changes, starting with our everyday observations. We call things that we observe macroscopic properties. Now remember, observations are things we notice with all of our senses, not just our eyes. We found that physical changes do not form new substances and happen as a result of the transfer of relatively small quantities of energy. We do not see flames or hear explosions. 
And we found that physical changes are often reversible. On a microscopic level, we found that during physical change, particles change the way they are arranged because the intermolecular forces between them change. I would like us to look at one more example of a physical change taking place. When a petrol attendant at a garage is filling the petrol tank of a car, you can hear the petrol gurgling as the yellowish liquid runs from the nozzle into the tank. But have you ever noticed that you can smell it too? Let's explain how this happens. Petrol is a mixture of many different substances. One of these substances is octane. The chemical formula for octane is C8H18. Because of the high pressure that is required to get the petrol from the pump into the car through the nozzle, the petrol particles gain kinetic energy and because of the increased energy, some of the petrol evaporates. In other words, the petrol changes from the liquid to the gas phase and that is why you can smell it. Remember, this phase change does not change the octane molecules. All it does is change the arrangement of the octane molecules. Now, let's see if you can apply what we have learned today. Here are examples of two changes. One, an ice cream that melts in the sun. And two, petrol burning in the cylinders of a motor car engine. When a spark from a spark plug ignites the petrol vapor in the air in the motor car engine, some of the octane burns in the oxygen in the air to form carbon dioxide and water vapor. So much energy is transferred during this change that the temperature in the cylinder goes up instantly to nearly 2000 degrees Celsius. Think about these changes very carefully and then answer the following two task questions. Decide whether each change is a physical change or not. Give both macroscopic and microscopic explanations to justify each decision. Remember to test what you observe in each change against the properties of physical change we have discovered in this lesson. You can draw up a table or draw diagrams to present your answers. Goodbye for now and see you for the next lesson.